Hey guys, welcome to Just Digital People's Question Wings and Things Season 4. Today we've got Elliot Delis from Finisa Security. The chief realist is what you kind yourself as. Yep. How are you feeling for today? A little nervous, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll start off with a little cheers anyway. Cheers, guys. Yeah, so I think you've seen the format. Five questions. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> Five questions. Five wings, yep. five hot sauces. Yep. But I've got a little sneaky surprise for you at the end mm. uh, with with a Richmond Markets find, which apparently is absolutely brittle. So 19 out of 10. 19 out of 10 is <laughs> So we've got that to look forward to with awesome. a couple of bonus questions. So before further ado, let's skip in. Yeah, let's get into it. Bottoms up. Cheers. Very nice. Yeah. So first question. So your background in big cyber consultancies, the likes of Trustwave, obviously all over Europe and Australia, and you obviously started Phrenesis a couple of years ago. So what are the, I suppose, key challenges, key learnings that you've had since starting the business a couple of years ago? I think the biggest shift from going from a director with P&L responsibilities to owning your own business mm. is just recognising you'll never have time to do everything. Yep. I sometimes say it's a bit like trying to eat a mountain with a dessert spoon, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're never going to get it all done, so the best <laughs> that you can do is just focus your efforts on the things that are most relevant right now, and that yep. can change quite quickly. Uh, the other really, really key thing I found is I have some amazing mentors. And so being able to lean on them has been absolutely critical. Like every time I encounter a new issue, I just recognize the fact someone has faced this before, someone has their own perspective. It doesn't mean that you blindly accept the advice that you're given, but the more different perspectives you get of a problem, the better you understand it. Yeah, for sure. Obviously, I'm very focused on the people side of things. And I think growing a business, obviously, you have to get, it's key to get the right people in mm. early doors. And you guys have, have done that. You know, I've met the guys there. Really, really good people, so well done on that. Yeah, it's absolutely, like, that's one of the most important things for us is culture, but also yeah. just recognising that if you get enthusiastic people that genuinely care about the work and are very intelligent, you can build all the hard skills, right? There's mm. certifications, there's training, there's qualifications, but if you get someone with all the qualifications but not the right attitude, it just rarely works out. Yeah, for sure. What is, what's that analogy? Attitude of aptitude. Big yeah, big, exactly. Big believer in that, for sure. <laughs> How did you find the first one? Oh, easy, easy, easy peasy. Yeah. Easy peasy. Yeah. Hopefully we'll say that. Yeah, we'll I know. Let's see, let's see how long that lasts. <laughs> um, so we'll step it up a bit. Original, still called death sauce, but they, they all are. Yeah, it's just different levels of death. Yeah, so that's always a good sign when it's got a giant skull on it. <laughs> <laughs> but right. I'm saying, mate. Cheers. Not Cheers. bad, Simon. Really tasty, isn't it? Mm. Um, so question number two. Mm. Obviously, I mentioned before, you spent time in, obviously, Australia, Europe, London. So... In terms of what you've seen, what are the key differences, if any, in terms of the attitudes towards cyber security in Europe and the UK compared to Australia? I think there's two key differences I noticed. One is about the threat environment, and the second one, I suppose, is sort of the operational context. So when I say the threat environment, one of the really interesting conversations I had when I used to live in Poland, and I also lived in London, and I remember moving to Poland and, and asking one of the guys who worked there, saying, oh, you know, I see a lot of the time, you know, the areas of focus of Europe, but, you know, for example, in Australia, we're often very focused on, say, China as a threat actor. You go, why isn't that a concern for you? And they're like, we've got Russia on our doorstep. Mm -hmm. and, and the immediacy of the threat environment is something that's really different. So, for example, in Australia, I think we often can be quite insulated from the rest of the world. Part of it's just the time zone as well. We've, mm. There's been bizarre things like, for example, in 2017, when WannaCry hit, which was the first big ransomware campaign that really woke everyone up to the reality of how bad ransomware could be. We literally slept through it. No one in Australia was really affected by it, largely because of the time zone. By the time we were all waking up to it and everyone was getting online and clicking links, it had kind of already been dealt with in Europe. So there's definitely an immediacy. It's, it's a very densely packed threat environment. There's people attacking from all sides. Uh, and like both in London and in Poland, right, these are countries that have a geopolitical history of coming under attack that we kind of don't really have in Australia. So I think people are very attuned to how real the threat is in a way in Australia. We're a little more complacent, but we're definitely getting there after the last couple of years, right? Yeah. The second one is the operating context. You know, it's just a highly interconnected region. Um, so, for example, I was doing some work for a uh, Middle Eastern banking organisation. And so they've got their Islamic banking code and they've got a Western banking code. And they've got two completely separate regulatory environments that they need to deal with at the same time. Plus, then they're interacting with the rest of Europe as well. Whereas, again, in Australia, we're, we're quite insulated in that way. Uh, but the benefit for that from an Australian perspective is it means that you've got a relatively limited set of threats and regulatory context that you need to operate within. So it's, it's a much better understood problem set 
even if sometimes we're a little behind. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, obviously we've, we've seen some of the things popping out in recent recent times, but again, I think it happens every day all over the world, right? So yeah. It's um, always interesting to keep an eye on the big stories when they come out. How did you find that second one? Easy peasy. Easy. <laughs> yeah. We'll kick it up. Little, little beer break. I think yeah. I'm thirsty now. And we'll kick it off into into question three. So the bomb. They actually have this in the hot ones. Oh, yeah. Series. And this is where I think it steps up. Jeez, great colour for this one. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, look at that. I'm, I'm gonna put on share. Let's let's step it up. <laughs> okay. I, I, I it looks it looks well. dangerous. This one looks mean. It does. It is mean. All right, get a good little dab. Cheers. Right. Cheers. It almost tastes minty. Mm, it's quite chemical. Woo! It's got a kick. It's a toothpaste. Mmm. <laughs> I'll start sweating now. <laughs> I'm going to go red on my hair in a second. <laughs> um, so obviously we've seen, you know, cyber um, in terms of a lot of the news recently. Actually, I'm going to start that again. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a step up, that one, isn't it? <laughs> right. Whew. Right, question three. Yep. Question three. So we've seen, obviously, Saturday in the news a lot recently. Um, obviously, a lot, of the, a lot of the big breaches hit the news. Mm. But there's probably a lot that goes under the radar as well. So, I suppose... <laughs> <laughs> We're only halfway. <laughs> no. Let me start again. And we can use that one. I'll finish the question. Um, <clears throat> Five minutes later. So what advice would you give to businesses and individuals to really protect themselves from any attacks? Yeah. Uh, so first thing I'd say is do the basics well. There's a lot of organisations that try to do 50 things at once mm. and generally end up doing them all fairly poorly. <sighs> this one's punishing me, man. <laughs> You're yeah. much better off picking, let's say, half a dozen controls that you know are going to be really, really effective. This is why the essential aid exists, right? So something like restricting admin privileges and patching your operating systems and, let's say, introducing MFA. Get those things right and you massively reduce your attack surface area. There's much fewer avenues now for you to get exploited. Um, it's takes a bit of forethought though, because some of these things can take a really long time to roll out. And so let's say if you've got a 12 year, 12 year, a 12 month strategy, leaving it to month nine to do something that takes a lot of consultation and engagement and planning is just doing for failure. Even if it's not particularly complex and not particularly expensive, you want to be planning ahead. But always, always, always doing simple things well, it's going to be much more effective than trying to do everything and balking it. Yeah, yeah <laughs> for sure. You're doing well there. I, I am tearing up a little. The question. <laughs> my mouth is on fire. That's only my second time having that one. And it, it gets me every time. Yeah. Brutal. Um, we'll move on to the first of probably the worst thing you ever put in your mouth. <laughs> um, so this one's called the Megadeth. Megadeth? Yeah. And again, let's, let's kick it up. Much nicer flavour than the other one. Less chemical. Mm. Less toothpaste yeah. Um, you feel alive, Faz? I do. <laughs> my lips are burning. Have I went redder than my hair? Yet. We've still got two to go. <laughs> so, question number four. Mm -hmm. Phoenisus is B Corp listed business. Your brand is cyber for good, yeah. which is great to see a business doing social impact stuff on a, on a wide scale. So, I mean, what are the big end goals? What's, what's the... What's the end goal for you, world domination? Yeah, yeah, not quite. <laughs> Look, the, the, the inspiration behind the whole B Corp thing was that in my work in government, like most of the time it was kind of like mind-numbing bureaucracy, right? Yeah. But then every now and then you'd have this amazing outcome. And the other thing that blew my mind was you'd have people from all these different backgrounds, educations, experiences, all come together with a common sense of purpose. The reality is in cyber, sometimes we do really cool stuff. You know, some yeah. of the pen tests we do, some of the red team engagements we do, you're just doing really fun and interesting things. Other times you're doing boring compliance work. So what I wanted to do is come up with a business model where no matter what work you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, you'd still go home with that sense of purpose, like it's another drop in the bucket for something really important. Yeah. Uh, so we picked a handful of charities that do really amazing work in Australia and went, let's just carve off 10% of our profits and go straight to them, right? It, it's just, for us, a cost of doing business. Um, it's good to see you, mate, and you guys are doing it really well. Oh, so thank you, Faz. Kudos, mate. Um, how do you find that one? I'm getting... I'm definitely getting, getting, a little, I'm getting a little sweat on the brow. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, I've got an event tonight, so hopefully my, my redness, <laughs> redness calms down. Um, right, so 
crescendo, usually the crescendo, but we've got a surprise one for you. Ultra death. Ultra death. Yeah, so shut that up nice for you. There you go. And I, I punish myself just as much as well. If you can see it, that actually looks like it's glowing. Look at that. <laughs> Radioactive. Yeah, all right. Cheers. Let's do it. Yeah, why don't you just blast it off mm. the top layer of taste buds and you're fine. I thought, you know, next time we should just get pure capsicum spray. That that into the oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. so question, number, question number five. What are the biggest fuck-ups you've seen? It doesn't have to be cyber-related, but, you know, generally in business as well. Not listening to people. Yep. Not listening to people is always it. Not listening to your staff. If, if your staff are unhappy about something, you know, I'm a real believer in the power of collective decision making. Like as, as a leader, you still have to make the call, but we're super, super transparent about everything that we do. And some of the most brilliant suggestions we have are from staff that just haven't been boxed into a particular way of thinking. People who have only a year or two into their professional careers that have these wonderful innovative ideas that you're like, that's amazing. Like I've never actually questioned why I approached this problem that way before. People want to be heard. You yeah, know? Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, how did you find that one? It's good. I still think this this one's the one that's punished me yeah. so far, but the one that... I don't, know, I don't know if it's lying to us, because it says 200,000, but that's definitely the one that's hit me hardest. Maybe it's the type of chilli that's in yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, the top one for this is habanero. <laughs> um, so I've got, I've got a story about the bonus the bonus one. Yeah. So I was walking down, <laughs> I was walking down Richmond Markets on um, Gertrude Street, um, and I said, came across this tent, stall, and the guy was saying, uh, this was prepared and made by a, a group, of two guys who were ex-convicts, ex-addicts, and basically they turned the, turn their lives around and they started making hot sauces called Uncle Mongo's and apparently it's done really well. So they've turned, obviously, their addiction around, which is great to see. Mm. Uh, but they're also punishing people through doing it. So I thought we'd punish ourselves today. Going to have me talking to Space Coyotes for the rest of the day? <laughs> Thanks to Uncle Mongo. Yeah. Actually, you know, I haven't touched that one there. All there right, go. sounds good. There we, and I haven't tasted this much Yeah, how much are you going to put on there? So, put it this way, my wife has been, obviously I bought this in the office today. Yeah. My wife's been eating this with her dinner. Oh, so okay. I think it should be hopefully okay, but she's a nutter. So. Yeah. She, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> All right, but let's I'm do good. it, man. Quick. So, I've got two bonus questions. So, we recently had Craig from Trustwave on. You, you, you uh, stitched him up with a few questions. A little bit. So, I'm going to hit you back. In your opinion, is cauliflower dishonest or misunderstood? It's a misunderstood vegetable. I know Craig thinks it's dishonest. It's not just a carrier of sauce, right? <laughs> it has a meaningful contribution. It doesn't pretend to be anything it's not. It's got a good texture, a simple flavour. You can fry it, you can boil it, you can put it into just about anything. You'll get over it eventually, don't worry. I agree, I think it is misunderstood. <laughs> I, think I mean, I get the whole carrier of cheese, carrier of sauce. Because cauliflower cheese is up there, yeah. special gravy, but I suppose it does fall, fall in the category of carry of <laughs> things, you know. Um, and final question, obviously you, you're a big British jiu-jitsu um, advocate, and you've recently took a back up. Who would you roll with? Celebrity, cyber figure, who would your ideal person to roll with be? So Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Sorry, that's <laughs> British. You see, I'm sure there is Brazilian a British jiu-jitsu. Jiu yeah, <laughs> um, okay, I reckon... I can it be Lex Friedman. So, yeah. Le do you know who Lex Friedman is? No. It's like a MIT guy, podcaster, tech mega mind, but also a very, very good Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner. The thing I love about BJJ mm. is it's this wonderful blend. It's a bit like cyber this way. There's a big crossover with cyber and BJJ. It's like a blend of the technical and the creative. You can have the best technique in the world, but there's little tips and tricks, and it's it's very strategic like chess, right? You really need to be planning two, three, four steps ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and someone who's that intelligent and that proficient, I feel like I learn so much. I'm just good at that. I said British and not Brazilian. There you go. I think the hot, the hot sauces have got to me. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely knew that, but yeah, love it. You know, thanks so much for coming on, mate. Oh, it's, it's always a pleasure, pleasure. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, if anyone's looking for a cyber partner, we've actually used these guys, and they are top notch. So would recommend. Legend, thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll see you next time. <laughs> Legend. Thanks, dude. <Nick. laughs>